Red has a problem. At least in my cube it does. And it's not really one I ever anticipated having. The first video I ever uploaded to this channel a few years ago was about how someone new to cube could build a decent mono red deck. Because it's probably the most consistent and present archetype across different cubes of all formats. Popper, modern, vintage, they're almost all going to have some variation of one mana prowess creature, bolt you, bolt you again. And this was something that I really enjoyed, that if someone's played magic even at all, chances are they can at least pilot a burn deck and know how to throw the deck together as opposed to something like twin or storm that can be a little more overwhelming. So this archetype has been a mainstay in my cube since I built it in 2017. Only seeing major changes when cards like Raghavan saw print as upgrades to other creatures. But the realization kind of abruptly hit me a few weeks ago. I can't remember the last time I saw someone actually draft a mono red deck. And I feel this would be one thing if it were a situation where the same group of people got together maybe every other month to draft. But we cube every single week and are consistently bringing in a rotating cast of new to the group and new to the game players. So why is no one drafting the most beginner friendly and frankly one of the highest win rate decks in the entire cube? Cards like Sulfuric Vortex and Eidolon of the Great Revel are undeniably powerful, efficient ways to win the fast game. That's why they're mainstays. But are they as fun to play as... The Paradox Engines, the Urzas, the Shieldreds, Gitrog Monster, or even cards like Cheaty Face? Apparently not, and to be honest I'd have to agree. There's not very many other decks that have as clear a roadmap as Mono Red, and I've always viewed this as more of a positive, play it safe option, but even players new to drafting seem to opt for the unfamiliar strategy. They want to be rewarded for going off the beaten path and learning something new. Building Storm and Whiffing because you don't understand the deck well enough, or learning that you can't reanimate an Emrakul at sorcery speed, can both be feel-bads, but they're ultimately learning moments that give a base understanding to build upon. It's not the Pro Tour, there's no pressure to be hyper-competitive, or even really efficient to a certain degree. There are of course similar learning moments with Burn, but there isn't nearly as much room for growth as the more nuanced decks. So ultimately what does this mean? Is red as a color just not worth including in your cube? It's not like the color pie allows red to do a whole lot more, at least compared to the others. Well, not so fast. Red provides a really important dynamic to any limited environment. Raghavan, Lelia, Glorybringer, and to some extent planeswalkers like Minsk and Boo and even Dak Faden are just a few of the non-combo oriented incentives to go into red early in a draft. And these aren't cards to scoff at by any means. The problem lies when these cards aren't being opened, but instead these are. They're fine cards and they do provide utility, but when they're being opened in packs with these cards, pretty objectively speaking, they're not quite as interesting, so they get passed. Red stays open and they end up being 14th and 15th pick that tend to never leave the sideboard in a game because there's just so much other cool stuff to build. I think the mono red deck needs a facelift, at least mine does. So yes, red is a less dynamic color than the rest of the pie, that's true. But I think there's enough there to bring it up to snuff in relation to some of the other archetypes at least. Generally speaking, red is a very proactive strategy. It's interactive when it needs to be, and I think that's generally a strength. But I feel red would really thrive if we turned the reactive dial up a touch. Going through what I consider some of the bigger players and potential hurdles for red, starting with the lands. Fixing my cube is very generous, making four and five color or lands matter decks fairly easy to put together. Think like four mana Omnath, Gitrog Monster, Titania, Fast Bond, Strip Mine Combo, etc. Blood Moon completely ruins this fixing and stops the combo. It also tends to be slightly difficult to splash, giving more incentive to be heavily based in red. Obviously, I do want players to build the decks they want, which is why I've made good fixing such a priority in my cube. So this isn't something I do want to have in mass, but this single enchantment can definitely help red win the unfavorable matches in a slightly more fun way, in my opinion. 
Paired with cards like Pillage and Avalanche Riders, even just taking out single lands can often be what wins a game. Gaia's Cradle, Talarian Academy, and Library of Alexandria are all massive players that can lead to pretty substantial swings in a game, and these kinds of cards do help mitigate that to some degree. Cards like Price of Progress, Ankh of Mishra, and Ruination are also all potential hate cards that act as an incentive to play mono red as well, albeit potentially overkill. Looking at the red cards that do seem to get drafted highly and put into decks more frequently than some of the other conventional burn cards, Robber of the Rich is no Raghavan and is actually the card I ended up cutting from my cube to add Raghavan when it came out. But it creates a similar play pattern that obviously is more fun and more engaging than other two drops in the cube. Similarly, Inti from the new Caverns of Vixalon set isn't quite Lelia, but does something very similar and in an interesting way that could lend itself useful in a handful of archetypes. Ultimately, these are just a few examples of where I'm at personally with my cube at the moment. I definitely don't think the red deck as is is lacking in power. Quite the opposite, honestly. Red in my cube is fairly well optimized to 4 0 when it's open. If anything, these changes would negatively affect the power level to some degree, but really, does it matter if no one's drafting the more optimized deck to begin with? I feel like people who get into magic deep enough to start constructing a cube largely tend to hyperfixate on the little things, sometimes to an almost obsessive degree. I know I certainly do at least. And fine tuning and optimizing something naturally makes us feel good, it's how our brains are just wired. So I think this tendency to fixate on little things can make it pretty easy to lose sight of the big things. Like are the people drafting this cube every week actually having fun playing with this deck to begin with? We cannot see the forest through the trees. I realize this video might not serve as much of a guide as some of my other cube content on this channel. Truth be told, I just realized I hadn't uploaded in nearly a year at this point and wanted to fix that. And this just happened to be what I was thinking about at the time. So if nothing else, just take this video as a reminder not to deprioritize fun while trying to make your cube as streamlined or optimal as possible. I know I've been less consistent than usual with uploads, and as much as I'd love to say I'll be more consistent, I kind of can't right now. Um, but I do have two videos on the back burner that should hopefully be out before 2025. Thanks as always for watching.